Despite what you may have heard, no, we're not running out of diesel fuel, but low stockpiles do mean higher prices. Here's what you should know. Stockpiles of distillate fuels, that means diesel fuels and heating oil, are low, but we're here to break down what that really means for those in the trucking industry. I'm Managing Editor Vesna Brykovich, and I'm here today with HGT's uh, Editor-in-Chief Deborah Lockridge, who noticed many reports of the diesel fuel shortage seem to be driven by some widespread misunderstanding. But before we clear the air, don't forget to subscribe to HGT Talks Trucking on YouTube and your favorite podcast platform, and we're on social media at Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Here's a message from the sponsor of today's episode. What drives your decisions? The choices you make can make a big difference for your fleet, and it all starts with what's under the hood. So when everything is riding on you to keep the wheels on the road, Turn to the proven protection of SitGuard heavy-duty engine oils. Learn more at sitgolubes.com. Thanks so much for coming on today, Deborah. Good to be here with you, Vajna. So a story you wrote for truckinginfo.com was by far the most read of November. The headline, I think it says it all, no, we aren't running out of diesel fuel, but low stockpiles mean higher prices. Lots of clicks, lots of comments, lots of shares on this one. So can you kind of break it down for us? What do those stockpiles actually mean for trucking fleets? Well, in a nutshell, basically, the low diesel stockpiles mean higher fuel prices. Uh, you know, back to your basic supply and demand. Supplies are low. Obviously, you know, trucking demand hasn't dropped. Um, and in fact, in some parts of the country, uh, the Northeast, because home heating oil comes from the same uh, distillate stocks as diesel in the winter, uh, there's actually more demand for, for those types of fuels. So uh, the prices end up going up. And some of the headlines we're seeing didn't look so pretty for trucking. So what were some of the misconceptions when we were first hearing about this supposed diesel shortage that drew you to write this story in the first place? So, yeah, so um, early November, there were a lot of sensational headlines, commentary, social media saying that we were going to run out of diesel fuel by Thanksgiving. Um, the, The problem was a misconception or a misunderstanding about one of the data points that's put out by the Department of Energy uh, about petroleum, the Energy Information Administration puts out tons and tons of various data. Um, one of the things it does is reports on distillate stocks, and they look at days of supply. Um, and those stocks are well below the typical five-year range. Um, so the data for the uh, late October showed the U.S. had about 26 days worth of supply. And that led some people to think that we were actually going to literally run out of diesel fuel. But that would only happen if all the U.S. refineries suddenly stopped producing and we stopped importing. The number is just a way to measure supply and demand. It is uh, it is normally more than 33 days. And so this low number of about 26 is a sign that refiners were having a hard time keeping up with the demand. Um, there were some scattered reports of some short-term shortages in some areas of the country. Uh, we had a few diesel, a few um, state governors put in hours of service exemptions for fuel haulers to make sure that fuel was able to get to where it needed to be. And so what were the events that led to the conditions that we're seeing now? So there's a lot of things that go into the price of diesel fuel. Obviously, the price of crude oil um, has been up and down, um, but also refinery capacity has fallen in the last few years. Um, some unprofitable refineries have closed; they haven't necessarily been replaced. Also, fall is a time when refineries typically do maintenance, so you know we've got some shut down for maintenance, and they're not producing. Uh, and what's happened in Ukraine? The cut off of Russian oil imports before the invasion of Ukraine by Russia earlier this year, uh, the U.S. was importing some 700,000 barrels a day of petroleum and petroleum products that helped to boost those stockpiles of distillates. And and then there also, um, I, th- I kind of think, at least some people think that maybe oil companies are 
um, looking to boost their profits, especially after you know the pandemic cut demand so much. Um, Tom Closa with the Oil Price Information Service uh, said recently that there was a dollar and fifteen cents per gallon separating the wholesale cost of diesel and the retail price of diesel. Um, and he also said gasoline retailers had their most profitable Thanksgiving break ever, um, with gasoline being uh, margins of over seventy cents per gallon, twice the margins of last year. So diesel and other distillates are more profitable for refiners than gasoline. And so when you think about these numbers and thinking about the same time past couple of years or how are these numbers comparing? So, I mean, obviously, distal stocks have been low. They still are low. Um, the Energy Information Administration said um, the end of October, distillate inventories were the lowest that they had been at the time of year since 1951. Wow. Um, yes. <laughs> they they have been getting a little better um, as of the third week of November, which was the latest numbers uh, that I could find before our recording here showed 27.1 days of supply of distillate stocks, uh, which was up a little from about the time I wrote the story when it was just under 26 days. Um, so still lower than usual, but it does look like it's improving. And so have you heard anything through the grapevine about when these costs and or when these stockpiles will more normalize? Um, well, the good thing is it uh, looks like things are looking up. Gasoline and diesel prices have been dropping. Um, as of the end of November, the on highway, on highway retail diesel prices were averaging 514 per gallon, which was down from where it had been hovering about 533, 534 for the previous month. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, Tom Closa with Opus, he also has said, uh, although we're not out of the woods when it comes to the diesel supplies, he is expecting diesel pump prices to drop back below $5 a gallon. Looking a little further ahead, oil and fuel prices are notoriously difficult to predict. As I said, there's so many different things that go into it, but that doesn't stop the government from trying. <laughs> and in uh, its short-term energy outlook uh, that it published earlier in November, um, it predicts a slightly slower economy the first half of New Year of the next year, which would mean a drop in demand, which would theoretically mean that prices uh, would end up dropping. It's still predicting that diesel fuel is going to average more than $5 a gallon um, for the rest of this year. It believes it'll drop um, average for 65 for all of 2023. Um, predicts that we will end the, this year at 509. Um, and for context, that's up from 329 in 2021 for a total year average. And so that's kind of what the energy department is predicting. Um, obviously, there are lots of wild cards there, what going on, goes on on the global stage with uh, situation in Ukraine, with OPEC and oil production. But uh, although distillate supplies are still low, I think that we're over the worst of it. Great. Thanks for diving into this issue today, Debra. I think that's it for this episode of HDT Talks Trucking. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and on your favorite podcast platforms so you don't miss a thing. You can stay up to date on the latest news written specifically for you in the trucking industry at truckinginfo.com. Thanks for joining.